We're like reality-making machines, you know? Every person on Earth, unless something's up with their brain, is in the business of creating their own reality. We go about causing things to happen in our lives. But there comes a time when we stop soaking up new information and start relying on our feelings. The tricky part is, relying on feelings to gauge the unknown doesn't work well. Why? Because feelings are often just memories of past experiences. So, we end up predicting future events based on old emotions and we get stuck in our old ways. It's interesting to think about how we can actually make things happen. I find it cool that people generally live in one of two mental states. Either we're in a state of creation where we're growing and expanding, feeling love, joy, and trust, all connected to something bigger. Or we're in survival mode, stressed out, throwing our bodies off balance. When this happens repeatedly, our bodies get used to it, and this imbalance becomes the new normal. We head towards trouble, like disease, feeling separate, being selfish, instead of selfless. The size of our brains makes it easy for us to trigger stress just by thinking. We do it all the time. And if this imbalance continues, it becomes our new normal. We start breaking down, getting sick, feeling disconnected. Those survival chemicals mess with our ego, making us more self-centered. Now, these chemicals are pretty addictive, but breaking free from their grip is liberating. It's like setting yourself free from emotional chains trapped in your body. True self-love and joy happen when you release that energy. The anger, hatred, and prejudice transform into joy with a different spin. No one else can do this for you. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable, break the addiction, and be okay with it. When your body is finally free and you feel that expansion, that's the real deal, the natural state of being. You know what's cool? When people say, I love myself a lot now because I went beyond what I thought I could do. It's like breaking free from the limits in how we think, act, and feel. That's the real deal, our personality, our identity. Here's the thing about beliefs. They're not always as clear as we think. Sure, we might nod along to an idea, but deep down, if we don't truly believe it's possible, it's just in our heads. To tap into the placebo effect, we've got to really change what we believe about ourselves and what our bodies can do. Let's imagine someone goes to the doctor with some symptoms. The doctor gives a diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment options based on what usually happens. The moment the person hears terms like diabetes or cancer, a bunch of thoughts and feelings pop up based on their past experiences. Maybe a parent had it, or they saw something on TV. Now, when the doctor gives their professional opinion, the person often just accepts it without really thinking. They trust the doctor, surrender to the treatment, and brace for whatever might happen. It's like they're taking the doctor's word for it without analyzing things themselves. But some folks who heal themselves using the placebo effect do things differently. First off, they don't just accept what the doctor says as the final say. They don't buy into the most likely outcome or destiny that the doctor predicts. They don't surrender to the diagnosis, prognosis, or treatment because they approach it all differently. Here's the twist. They have a different mindset. Unlike those who accept, believe, and surrender, these folks are in a different state of being. They don't easily buy into the doctor's advice because they're not feeling scared or victimized. Instead, they're full of optimism and enthusiasm. That's what makes the difference when it comes to healing themselves with the placebo effect. So those emotions kicked in and sparked a bunch of new thoughts for these folks. And you know what's cool? It made them see new possibilities. Why? Because they had different ideas and beliefs about what could happen. They didn't prep their bodies for the worst case scenario, and they sure didn't expect the same old outcome as others with the same diagnosis. Now, here's the twist. They didn't attach the same meaning to the diagnosis as everyone else. Nope. They gave it a different meaning.
a meaning that shaped their future in a different way. Their intention was different, you see. They understood things like epigenetics and neuroplasticity, not just sitting back and feeling like victims of the disease. They took that knowledge and turned it into action, thanks to what they learned in my workshops and events. And guess what happened? These folks got better results than others who got the same diagnosis. Now think about the usual person who gets a diagnosis and boldly declares, I'm going to beat this. Sure, they might not fully accept what the doctor says, but most haven't really changed their deep down beliefs about not being sick. Changing a belief means tweaking a subconscious program, and just using conscious thoughts doesn't cut it. They get stuck because they don't know how to reprogram their genes. Could it be that when people don't respond to treatment or their health stays the same, they're stuck in the same emotional state each day? Maybe they're just going along with the medical model without really thinking about it, joining the millions who've done the same thing. Is a doctor's diagnosis kind of like a modern voodoo curse? Now, if we want to change a belief or a perception about ourselves and our lives, we've got to decide it with serious intention. This decision needs to pack more energy than the usual brain programs and emotional conditioning. Your body has to respond to your mind, making that choice a moment you never forget. And here's the key. The stronger the emotion you feel when you make that choice, the more you'll remember it. So, how do you shake off that old belief? If the emotional trauma was a 6 or 7, your decision to change has to be a solid 9. You've got to step out of your comfort zone and that moment becomes the one that defines you. You'll say, I remember exactly where I was, who I was with, and what day it was when I made up my mind to change. When you form a long-term memory, it happens because of strong emotions. Now the trick is, these emotions need to pack more punch than a big betrayal. Imagine your body responding to your mind like it's getting a sneak peek into the future emotionally. You're basically labeling your dreams as impossible, but your body is actually getting a taste of what's coming down the road. It's like experiencing a big explosion in the quantum field, a major side effect. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you mix a clear intention with a high energy emotion, it's like you're remembering your future. And guess what? It looks just like remembering your past. Wrap your head around it. Think about it in your brain circuits and feel it in the emotions of your new belief. Watch how your life starts doing a flip because, you know, nothing in our life changes unless we change something. Change your energy, change your life. It's that simple. Now, forget the old mindset of it being hard or a struggle. No more trying, wishing, or hoping. That's what we do when we're feeling lacking or separated. It's all about change. When we get that aha moment that being abundant means shaking off the old personality, everything clicks. Let's talk about attitudes for a second. You string a bunch of thoughts and feelings together, they become a habit, even an automatic attitude. Attitudes are just shortened states of being, they can last a few minutes or even a week. Positive thoughts lead to a good attitude, negative ones, a bad attitude. Repeat or maintain an attitude long enough and you've got yourself a belief. It's like hardwiring these thoughts and feelings into your brain and conditioning them into your body. It's almost like getting addicted to them, making it tough to change and not feeling great when they're challenged. See. Experiences get etched into your brain and embodied as emotions, creating beliefs based on past memories. So, when you keep revisiting the same thoughts over and over, thinking about and analyzing what you remember from the past, those thoughts become an automatic, unconscious program. If you keep feeling the same way based on old experiences, your body gets stuck in the past without even realizing it. Over time, if this repetition turns into a habit, your body becomes a puppet dancing to the strings of those old feelings. And guess what? Your beliefs start lurking in the shadows of your subconscious and unconscious, shaped by what's gone down in the past. Beliefs are like the bosses of the gang. 
They're more permanent than attitudes and can stick around for ages, influencing you without you even knowing it. Now link a bunch of related beliefs and voila, you've got yourself a perception, how you see the world based on your long lasting beliefs, attitudes, thoughts, and feelings. You don't even realize why you believe certain things until life throws a curveball. Your perceptions, the way you see things, are like a snapshot of the past. Scientific experiments even show that you don't see reality as it is. Instead, your brain fills in the blanks based on your memories, chemically locked in your noggin. Once perceptions become automatic or subconscious, you start editing reality without even knowing it. Take your car, for instance. You know it's your car because you've driven it a zillion times. Your attitude about it creates a belief. Say, it's a good car because it rarely breaks down. But here's the thing. Someone with the same car might see it differently if theirs is a constant troublemaker. Most days, you probably don't pay much attention to your car unless something goes wonky. You expect it to chug along like always. Your future expectations of driving it are shaped by your past experiences. But when it acts up, suddenly you're all ears, paying attention to every little sound. That's when you become conscious of your unconscious perception. If something changes in your car's behavior, your whole outlook on it shifts too. Let's see about how this works in relationships with your spouse, co-workers, your culture, your race, and even your own body in pain. This is how most of our perceptions about reality roll. Now, if you want to switch up a perception that's hanging out in the shadows of your mind, you've got to crank up your consciousness and turn down the unconsciousness. You need to pay attention to all the bits and pieces of yourself and your life that you've been ignoring. Better yet, wake up. Change up your awareness game and become fully conscious of what you used to be oblivious to. The moment you're aware of those automatic thoughts, reflex habits, and emotional reactions, that's your ticket to staying conscious. It's like lighting a match in a dark place. When you're sitting in the quiet, those thoughts and emotions that usually slide under the radar start showing up. People often think they're doing meditation wrong when this happens. But nope. That's the sweet spot. You're bumping into thoughts that usually sneak by unnoticed. You catch how you speak and react, and that's a win. Breaking the habit of being yourself takes energy and awareness. Now, our environment can be a sneaky puppet master, controlling the way we think and feel. Responding to your coworker, the news or traffic can easily trigger those unconscious programs. But in meditation, you're disconnecting from the environment. It's like putting your body on pause, training it to sit still. When emotions start bubbling up instead of letting them steer your thoughts and actions, you settle your body down, bringing it back to the present moment. And that, my friend, is a victory.
Thank you.